Hey, what's up guys? Ganon here. Welcome back to the captain's chair. Today we're going to be reviewing episode 6 of Picard, The Impossible Box. This is going to be a quicker recap just because I'm kind of behind on the Picard reviews and I kind of have to get this one in and out there. In this episode, we start with Narek and Soji in bed again. They're fooling around. For Narek, it's really like crunch time. This dude really needs to be super hella manipulative. He's playing Soji like a flute at this point. Basically, he has a talk with his sister, Lieutenant Rizzo. I don't know her like Tal Shiar name if she has one. I'm just gonna call her Lieutenant Rizzo. They have this back and forth and they're like, yo, you're taking too long. We're gonna call this operation off and we're going to go and like, you know, we're gonna kill Soji basically. We don't need her existing anymore. But Narek's like, oh, but why does she dream? There's gotta be a purpose for everything. Why does she dream? Basically, it seems like he wants to find out where the synth home planet is there's like a synth home planet or something or at least the planet that bruce maddox produced and developed soji and dodge on so Narek basically manipulates soji into doing this like psychological yoga i would say this kind of mind technique that's like sacred to romulans the way they were describing it at first i was worried that they were going to write in some kind of Romulan mind meld in some way and I probably wouldn't have been comfortable with that but no it's just some form of like psychological yoga where you just open up the mind and kind of have clearer thoughts in this room of lamps which is kind of cool actually that's what's going on with Soji go over to La Sorina. Now, me and my friend Caleb were actually talking about this. We don't actually know if we like Agnes anymore. Like, she kind of did something super irredeemable. She legitimately murdered Bruce Maddox. Like, she is definitely guilty of murder. Not to mention, at the beginning of this episode, she was getting super, super friendly with Chris Rios. And I don't think she was doing that on her own accord. I think she's sleeping with Chris Rios intentionally to be manipulative in some way. I feel like maybe she is troubled and also maybe she is like a good person because it seems like she feels a lot of regret and remorse for what she did. But then again, it could also just be a cover up and she could actually be truly malicious. We don't know at this point, honestly. They get to the board cube. Card explains the base plan for like why he's gonna get on the board cube and everything. They need Rafi's help basically to get him these credentials for him to be able to go upon the board cube and get like a diplomatic meeting between him and the board cube's director who happens to luckily be Hugh, and Hugh is one of the homies. So he's like, yep, I think Hugh is going to want to talk to me. Keep in mind, while all this is going on, throughout the episode, you just see these little scenes of Narek, and he's slowly pushing Soji intentionally towards learning the fact that she's not actually like a real human being. He mentions earlier in the episode how every call with her mother lasts 70 seconds, so she like talks to her mom and then goes into sleep mode. And then Soji also finds out that everything in her room is like 36 months old old and that she's only existed for like 36 months and all of her memories were falsified and programmed into her. Picard beams over onto the cube. He has like super huge Vietnam flashbacks about being on a Borg cube, about being Lacutus. These Borg come over and kind of like touch him and everything and he's like gets so triggered and he almost starts having a fucking seizure. And then here comes Hugh and he's like, oh no, those Borg are just trying to help you out. Hugh, oh my gosh, they have this awesome reunion. Hugh is so nice, literally like the nicest, most loyal dude in this series so far oh my god i love the hugh picard reunion it was so sweet and nice and really good fan service and i love to see it basically picard explains that they need to find soji right away yada 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 there's a lot of like borg stuff that hugh and picard go over i don't want to go into detail about all that because i'm trying to do this review a little bit faster than usual but there is this one scene that um, people are kind of like laughing about. Picard and Hugh are walking down the aisle, are like walking down the hallway in this Borg cube. And then this one Borg comes out and he's like, Lacutus? And it's just like super like funny the way he says, he's like, yo, what's up Lacutus? Haven't seen you in a while. Anyways, Picard and Hugh are officially on the hunt for Soji. Soji and Narek go into this super secret Romulan yoga room and then they perform this ritual. Narek basically is trying to open up her mind and actually make her like enter her subconscious so that she can go into this dream that she has herself when she's a child, going into Bruce Maddox's lab on this planet that the Romulans are desperately trying to locate. Every time Soji goes beyond these orchids and tries to see what her father is doing, Bruce Maddox, he like yells at her and then she gets frightened and then wakes up from the dream. But Narek insists that she just keeps on going and ignore her father. Her father like turns around and he's like a scary apparition with no face, so it's really meant to like frighten her. 
She keeps on going and then she sees herself on the table, a doll, like, not fully assembled. She is very disturbed by that, you can tell. Narek demands that she look up and tell him what she sees in the skylight. She describes that there's two blood red moons and lightning going on. Basically, giving them huge clues as to the home planet of the synths or like, you know, where Bruce Maddox developed Soji and Dodge again. So the Tal Shiar have got what they wanted in this episode. They got what they wanted from Soji, but now it's time for Picard to come in and acquire Soji. Narek leaves Soji into the room. He's like, oh, you're never real. He's like, goodbye, Soji, bye. Pulls a real Chad move and leaves the room and locks her in there. Leaves in there with some toxic radiation. Wow, real ch Chad move there, Narek. So she She's about to die from this radiation, so of course her programming kicks in and she gets activated, punches the floor, and then dips out of there like a ninja. I don't know why Narek thought it would be okay to put her like in a room that was made out of like bamboo and fucking sandpaper. It seems like it was really easy for her to get out of there. Picard and Hugh find Soji, and then Picard's like, oh, I know your sister. That scene was really good, by the way, the um, Soji and Picard meeting. Picard's like, oh, I know your sister. I wasn't able to help her. He gives her the necklace. He's like, please. Please trust me. Of course, there's a moment of hesitation because she probably doesn't know what the fuck is going on. She's probably questioning me right now whether she's existed for longer than 36 months. So there's a little bit of hesitation there, but she decides to trust Picard. Q takes them into the Borg Queen room where we find out on some Borg cubes at least have a Sicarian projector. Sicarians were in an episode of Voyager that I've actually seen, by the way. They were a very technologically advanced race in these projectors, like they said in the episode, could go like 40,000 light years. They're basically like portals. Q said that they are put into the Borg Queen's chambers in the event of an emergency. A lot of people are complaining about this because it's like, well, why would the Borg have this super advanced technology and not use it? I think it's under my understanding that it probably takes a lot of power. It probably takes a super advanced energy source or some matrix that the Borg don't fully understand or don't have. So they have probably have to generate a lot of power just to send like a very few amount of people through at a time or for it to even be open. That's just my guess as to why the Borg don't use spatial projectors just to be super OP and take over the fucking universe. Anyways, they go through and they're going to this place called Nepenthe. I haven't seen like the next episode Nepenthe yet. It is out currently. I'm going to watch it after this review actually. But yep, they go to the Nepenthe. I know Troy and Riker are going to be there. I'm super freaking excited. Oh, and also before they go through the portal, Elnor shows up and chops up some Romulans in a super awesome and cool way. Elnor, a very weird decision, but I kind of understand why they did it. They probably had to do this for plot purposes because for some reason, Elnor can't go through that portal with him. It just would like make sense probably because they want to make Picard a little bit vulnerable in some way like they don't want the brawn of Elnor around so they wrote in that Elnor kind of had to stay back and not go through the spatial projector with him I am just very worried about Hugh and Elnor's fate today on the official Star Trek Instagram I think they posted a story about like an official statement from John Delarco I think his name is the actor who plays Hugh like an official statement on last episode and there's like spoilers so damn I really hope Hugh doesn't fucking die because Damn, that reunion was just so wholesome, and it would suck to see him die after just him being such a nice guy all the time. Anyways, I give this episode probably like a 5 or a 6 out of 10. It wasn't like too great. A couple of good moments in there, but I feel like the next episode of Nepenthe is really where I'm gonna get in my feels seeing Riker and Troy and all them. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching my review. I'm gonna go actually watch the next episode of Picard right now in Nepenthe, and I will let you know how that is very soon. If you enjoyed the video, please slap a like on it. Please leave a comment. You know I love comments. And with that, I'm going to have to see you in the next one.